Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to continue working on the mini jet boat project and this is future me talking. Uh, in this video I do make a pretty big mistake. Let's see if you can spot it before I point it out in the video. If so, let me know down in the comments. So here's something I want to show you guys. It might save somebody out there some time and some money and some frustration. Uh, this is a tap and die set I got from Harbor Freight. It came with the taps and the dies. The one thing it didn't come with is a handle. And this end on here is 9 16 or 14 millimeters. I couldn't find a handle that would hold something that big. I also ordered a tap from Amazon and this is much, much better than this Harbor Freight. It was much sharper. I used some tap magic and it cut right into that adapter ring like it was nothing. But like I said, I didn't have a handle, but what I did is I just went on Amazon and bought two El Cheapo wrenches. I think these were $4.89 a piece and they are 14 millimeter. And if you look right here, it goes right on there into that tap. And what I did is I just welded these together and it worked fine. So for less than $10, I got something that'll work on these larger taps. And so far it's turned out pretty good. All right, so I was watching all of the footage that I had shot earlier in the day and I realized that I screwed up and it's not unfixable, but it is a screw up that needs to be fixed. If not, the boat would probably sink. And some of you guys may have caught it in the video. Uh, I doubt it unless you were paying more attention than I was. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go over here and I will show you exactly what I did. And here is the adapter ring that I had just installed the day before. And as you can see, I have scraped all of that Sikaflex adhesive off of this, and it really wasn't that bad. Uh, all I had to do was scrape the thick stuff off and then acetone clean the rest of it up quite nicely. And then just for good measure, I hit it with a cup brush and you really can't tell anything 
was ever done to it. And here is the intake. It's all cleaned up on this surface and this surface. And I did the same thing, just scraped the thick stuff off, got the rest off with acetone. And like I said, it really wasn't that big of a job to do. I was dreading it. I thought it was gonna be much worse than it was, but it was actually quite easy. And so here is where I made the mistake. If you go back just a few seconds and you watch the video, you will see that I took that Sikaflex and kind of zigzagged in between each hole, went around each hole, and that is the mistake that I made. And the reason why that is a mistake is if you look here, you can see these little voids, these little hollow spots in between each bolt hole, and yes, the Sikaflex that was around each bolt hole squeezed out, but in between that little zigzag that I did did not squeeze out. And like I said, I caught this on the video. I knew these voids were here. I just was not thinking when I put the adhesive on the intake. What I should have done is put the adhesive on the boat and then smash the intake down on top of it. And I didn't film any of this because I was so mad at myself for making this mistake. Like I said, I already knew not to make the mistake and I did it anyway just because I wasn't thinking. So I didn't do any filming at all on correcting the problem, but I did snap a picture on my phone. And as you can see here on the intake in between most of the bolt holes, the uh, Sikaflex did not squeeze out. So that intake was not sealed. And that means a lot of water would have leaked into the boat through where that intake mounts down onto the boat. I don't think this would have been a catastrophic failure if I had not caught this. Uh, a lot of water would have leaked into the boat, but I do plan on keeping a really close eye on it the first time that I take this uh, and put it in the water because I don't know if my welds are watertight. I plan on having to fix a few small leaks and little dribbles of water and things like that. But it is good that I caught it now because if I had installed the engine and the exhaust and the plumbing and all the wiring and everything else, it would have been a lot harder to get that intake out and correct this problem. So I am thankful that I did catch it now. And just like that, the intake is in. It was only a few seconds for you guys, but for me it was about two and a half hours. And you can see now I've got squeeze out all the way around the perimeter of this intake, so that's good. Now right here, these holes aren't used for Yamaha. These are Sea-Doo holes. So there's not a whole lot of squeeze out up here at the top, but I'm not too worried about that because this bottom part is where the water is going to try to come through. And as you can see, there's plenty of squeeze out there. And also while I was in here, I hooked the motor up. It is now sitting on its motor mounts. And I don't know if you can see this, there's no engine stand holding the engine in place. You can actually see the engine stand is way over here on the other side of the shop. And one other thing that I checked is I've got a quarter here and this gap. This gap is good because I can just barely get a quarter in the gap there on the Lovejoy connection. So now I can cross a few things off of my list. And the items I'm crossing off on my list is the Sikaflex because that's the adhesive, that black adhesive that goes around the intake and the adapter ring. All of that's installed. I don't need to do this anymore. And also off camera, it wasn't very exciting. I did install an air filter, so I have crossed that off my list as well. So I know around February 1st, I told you guys I had a goal of having this project completed on May 1st. Well, here it is the second week of April and it's just not gonna happen by May 1st. And the reason is uh, life has thrown me a bunch of curveballs in the past six weeks. And if you add up all the little one hour here, one hour there, the time that I've come out here and actually been able to do something on this boat the past six weeks, it probably adds up to about seven or eight hours. So it's hard to believe that in a few weeks, it's been a year since I've started this project. I mean, time flies. I mean, I've had a whole lot of stuff go on in the past year, and I really hope to have it done uh, by the spring of this year. That was my goal, and then I moved it to May 1st, and now it's looking like it's gonna be about the middle of the summer. But during this past six weeks, when I haven't been able to work on the boat, I have ordered a lot of parts. So I've got a big stack of parts over in the basement of the house, and once I can get started on this project again and get the ball rolling, I think it's gonna go pretty quick. 
So here's where the project sits right now. The engine is mounted in the boat. The intake is mounted in the boat. It's all hooked up. I need to start working on the wiring, all this wiring, the exhaust, the plumbing for the coolant lines, and a fuel tank. And my next goal is to work on all of that and actually get the engine running in the boat. So getting that engine running is gonna be my next goal to try to achieve. I hope you've been liking these videos. If you have, please smash that like button for me. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.